At this year's Biophysical Society annual meeting, members from around the world gather here in San Francisco to network and connect and exchange the latest thinking about how the molecules of life are made, how different parts of a cell move and function, how complex systems in our bodies work, and much more. Since the 1950s, BPS members from scientific backgrounds including math, chemistry, physics, engineering, pharmacology, and material sciences have used their skills to explore and develop new tools for understanding how life works. And we're here to cover it all. This is Biophysical Society TV. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to day three of the Biophysical Society annual meeting and our second episode. We've got a packed program for you today, so let's get to it. On today's episode of Biophysical TV, we welcome a few more special guests to our studio, including Afuad Niarko on cell growth regulation, Padmini Rangamani on modeling cell membranes, Theanne Griffith also stops by to give us a preview of tomorrow's Just Be poster session, and finally, we're honored to be joined by Nobel Prize winner Francis Arnold. Be sure to stay tuned for the whole episode as we will be once again joining two featured institutions that are paving the way for new discoveries in structural biology. But first, a message from our 2023 program co-chairs. Hi, I'm Janice Robertson. I'm at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, um, and I'm one of the 2023 program co-chairs for the Biophysical Society meeting. I'm Baran Chanda. I'm at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, and I'm one of the program co-chairs. I think one of the things that this pandemic has taught us is that how quickly uh, research in basic sciences can get translated into uh, therapeutics and, uh, and into uh, drugs. So our intention is here to highlight some of the cutting edge areas that are uh, likely to become therapeutics. Yeah, we wanted to take this opportunity to really, uh, since we've had a break from scientific meetings for a while, we wanted to highlight um, a lot of the research that maybe did not get featured in, in recent years too, um, especially you know advances in uh, DNA and genome organization, uh, the world of RNA. We also wanted to focus on exciting new discoveries in biophysics, especially protein folding and predicting protein fold. Um, where, where is the uh, future of this field going? Scientific discovery happens best when we surround ourselves by creative minds. And so we really need to talk and interact with each other and be able to share our science. And San Diego is a great place to do that. It, you can, there are lots of good places to hang out and I think it will be a great meeting. And it's positioned in terms of it's right where people from Asia can come as well as from Europe and things like that. It's convenient for everybody. We really look forward to seeing all of our members in 2023 in San Diego. The Oklahoma Center of Biomedical Research Excellence and Structural Biology is an NIH-funded research center focusing on career development of junior faculty and enhancement of research infrastructure in X-ray-based structural biology. They have funded 29 projects over the last 10 years in a variety of research areas. Let's see what they're up to. COBRE stands for the Center of Biomedical Research Excellence. This is a um, grant that is supported by the National Institutes of Health. It's an institutional development award. And over those 10 years, we've funded approximately 29 projects. Several junior faculty members have made it through the academic ranks and been tenured and promoted. We're very proud of that. And we've supported two core facilities, one in protein expression and uh, purification and biophysical characterization, and a second core that focuses on X-ray crystallography as well as X-ray diffraction studies. 
We are on the cusp of a phase three application that we hope will be funded by the NIH and will provide five additional years of funding to help transition our core facilities to a sustainable future. Today we are beginning with Padmini Rangamani, professor at the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at UC San Diego. She'll be giving a talk on Monday entitled Elucidating the Role of Membrane Tension and Cellular Processes Using Continuum Modeling. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about your research. Um, I want to know why the curvature of a membrane is an interesting thing to study. So if you think about cells and how they respond to a lot of the external environment and also the changes that happen within them, they change their shape. And one of the most obvious things that you can think about when cells change their shape is how they change their membrane curvature. It's, there has been so many experimental observations on how cells change their curvature. And what we do in my group is think about it using mechanics. You're thinking about the forces exerted, the stresses, and how those may play a role along with all the chemical and the genetic processes involved in um, the changing the shape of the cell. And I think it's a very fundamental biological process involved in both physiology and pathology. Wonderful. And what might be one of the practical uses of this uh, area of study? So the way we study uh, changes to cell curvature is thinking about uh, what are the forces exerted, as I mentioned, and that helps us take a lot of the molecular details that many people may be studying in terms of the particular proteins, in terms of the particular protein sequences, and um, domains and thinking about, okay, what are the general principles? You know, what is the physics involved in, and you know, we are at Biophysical Society meeting, so we do like to think a lot about the physics involved and what these uh, shape changes might look like. So it helps us put together a lot of the details in a bigger picture. I know we were speaking earlier, but tell me a little bit about your background. I know that it's quite varied in terms of your education. Yeah, so the way I would like to describe it is a little bit of jack of all trades, if you will. And um, I have my background is both in chemical engineering, my bachelor's and my master's, and my PhD is in biological sciences from a med school. So it's a very um, mixed background, and I mostly got extremely fortunate that I could build a scientific career without necessarily following a traditional path of, you know, one major throughout my training. Um, the advantage of that is then you kind of get to like know more details about a lot of things and um, it has helped me really build a lot of experimental collaborations even though I'm a theoretician myself and uh, it helps the communication between different groups of mm. uh, uh, different subgroups in the field uh, easier, definitely. Yeah. And what would you recommend to a young person who is maybe beginning their uh, path in academia or science in terms of what to study or how to approach? A lot of uh, how uh, these things work is a good combination of, um, you know, being at the right place at the right time, good mentorship in sometimes luck, but I think in terms of picking problems, if someone were coming from a modeling perspective, uh, I would essentially ask what my postdoctoral mentor said we should ask, you know, is there any experimental evidence for the question you're studying? If without mm. experimental evidence, is it an exercise in thinking about uh, the mathematical details or can you build more strength into it by finding experimental evidence? So I would say that if you can ground your question, in the experiments, mm. and that's why meetings like this are great, then maybe you have a sense of where the field is going. Well, it's been such a pleasure to speak with you. I can't wait to hear your talk, and I hope you have a wonderful time here. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with me. Did you know cryo electron microscopy has made its way to the heart of the Midwest? At Iowa State University, the faculty have made it their mission to train and provide access to the latest in cryo-EM techniques to the greater Iowa region. Cryo-electron microscopy, or cryo-EM, is a technique that's used by structural biologists to solve structures of macromolecules. What is exciting to me about cryo-EM is how it's bringing in all these different people from different labs and different research programs to work on similar types of questions using a similar technology. Cryo-EM facility was established in the year 2020 uh, with a mission to provide research infrastructure and support interdisciplinary science and structural biology. 
What I'm most excited about with having the new CryoEM facility here is creating a national hub for CryoEM at Iowa State University. Iowa State University is an excellent place to work. We encourage collaborations and users to come to CryoEM facility and work together with us. I'm actually getting goosebumps. We can look at this image and we're actually looking at this protein that we've thought about and worked with for 20 some years. And next, we'd like to welcome Afua Nayarko, Assistant Professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics at Oregon State University. She'll be giving a talk entitled Embracing Dynamics, Distinctive Feature of Multivalent IDP Assemblies in Cell Growth Regulation. Go ahead and tell me a little bit about your talk. When we look at cell growth, right, if it's uncontrolled, we can get diseases like cancer because the cells just grow out of control, right? Fortunately for us, we have these tumor suppressor proteins which check the proteins that cause cells to overgrow. And so that's a nice thing. I mean, we can learn what these natural tumor suppressors do and that can inform the way we, we design drugs for cancer. And one of the ways they do that is by binding to those um, proteins that cause cells to grow excessively. So what I'll be talking about is some of the binding mechanism, how they go about interacting with these proteins. So I know that the regulation of cellular growth has been something that's been studied for a long time, but what is it that you are bringing to this? Well, so the fact that we don't have a cure for cancer tells us that we still have a lot to learn. And what I'm bringing is looking at these um, interactions between the proteins, the tumor suppressor proteins that I talked about, in a different light. We've always thought at, about them as very static interactions where one protein binds one site and that is it. But now we're beginning to see them in a different light. We see that the binding is not just to one specific site, but there are multiple binding sites and the interactions are very dynamic, not static. And how did you find yourself in this field? Well, I have always been interested in cellular processes, right? So um, I've established a lab um, using biophysical tools to um, study multi-protein complexes. And um, it's interesting, I, I didn't get into biophysics till my grad school years. And it was, it was a game changer because once I understood the basic concepts, it made me realize how I can use these physical principles and quantitative methods to really um, address biological questions. And tell me a little bit about what you hope for the future in terms of your study, research, uh, practical applications. Yes, yeah, so we are doing basic research, but I think the work we do is really going to give us a lot of insight into disease mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And so there's a potential that what we learn can be used to design better drugs to treat multiple diseases. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. I so look forward to your talk. Well, thanks for having me. When you're here at the Biophysical Society meeting, a casual conversation about protein folding or cell membranes might be a normal thing. But when you're home, we bet you get a few odd looks from your friends. We asked Biophysical Society members, what do your non-scientist friends think that you do? And what do you actually do? So my friends, not in science, think I run a massive supercomputer that's gonna take over the world. And my, what I actually do is study how proteins wiggle and jiggle so that we can find new ways to drug them. Most of my friends think that I uh, just come and play with uh, mice, but I actually are uh, trying to find a treatment for heart failure and hopefully that treatment will help uh, humans. My grandma thinks I do cancer research because I told her that mutations to the spliceosome is linked to a lot of cancers and she doesn't know what splicing is. But I actually investigate how mutations to splicing proteins is linked to uh, cancers and other types of retinal diseases. 
Well, my friends who are not in science think that I'm a chemist. Uh, in reality, I'm a biophysicist who's working on my working with microscopes to solve problems about motor proteins. The inaugural Justice for Underrepresented Scholars training in biophysics poster session celebrates the achievements of underrepresented and underserved students, postdocs, and early career researchers. Theanne Griffith stops by to tell us about the new event. My name is Theanne Griffith and I am a, an assistant professor in the Department of Physiology and Membrane Biology at the University of California, Davis. Just B stands for Justice for Underrepresented Scholars Training in Biophysics, and this year at the Biophysical Meeting, we're hosting the inaugural Just B poster session. The main objective of this poster session is to serve as a networking and recruiting event and to highlight the work of underrepresented uh, people training in biophysics. This idea came about around two years ago, a little bit before the pandemic. We felt that the Biophysical Society is a wonderful and inclusive organization and really wanted to have a session specifically dedicated to highlighting the diversity of the Biophysical Society membership. One of the biggest impacts that I hope the poster session has, again, is just really highlighting the work that underrepresented minorities are doing in the biophysics field. And what we really want to do is grow this. We're starting with a poster session, but we're really hoping to turn this into a formal fellowship program in the coming years where we can really have um, good support of underrepresented scholars who are training in biophysics through professional development opportunities and mentorship, as well as travel to the annual meeting. One thing that I would really love to communicate is that this is a grassroots initiative that we are literally building from the ground up and would really appreciate any donations. Um, there's going to be the possibility of donating on the Biophysical Society website as well as when you renew your membership. So please keep our session in your mind when you are um, renewing your membership and please consider making a donation to Just Be. So the poster session is going to be on Monday from 3 to 5, just outside the exhibition hall. And importantly, there is going to be free food. Let's head back to the floor to hear from Frances Arnold, winner of the 2018 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, about her featured lecture on Monday evening. I'm Frances Arnold. I'm a professor of chemical engineering at Caltech, and I'm here because I love biophysics. I want to tell people about the glories of evolution and how this remarkable design algorithm that nature has used to create everything in the biological world can be tamed and used to create new biological things. Maybe things nature never really cared about, but that allow us to explore where proteins could go in the future, how proteins could solve human problems, and how they function. I'm a protein girl, I have to say. I just love proteins, and all the biophysics of proteins is interesting to me. I actually am a card-carrying biophysicist. I did postdoctoral work with Nacho Tinoco, and it put a little bit of order in the chaos of biology. Science can be hard, but it's so worth it, and it's so important for us to push forward in science and to communicate it to the rest of the world. Both the joy of doing science, but the importance that it has for our well-being. Amazing work from all our distinguished guests and featured institutions. That's all from us here for today. On tomorrow's episode, we tour a few of the innovative companies in our exhibition hall, explore molecular modeling and stress granules, and check in with incoming president, Gail Robertson. And don't forget, you can watch Biophysical TV here in the Moscone Convention Center, in select hotels, and online. Thanks again for joining us and see you tomorrow for our final episode.